Well, after months of anticipation, the World Meteorological Organization has made the call. El Nino is back. The UN's weather agency has officially declared an El Nino. The World Meteorological Organization says the global weather pattern, El Nino, has returned for the first time since 2016. And this makes weather very unpredictable. Drought in some areas? Months of drought and the water levels are so low, an entire medieval village, usually underwater, has come to light. Elsewhere, there's intense rain, even flooding. After months of floods ravaged Pakistan last year, residents and business owners in the north are suffering again and bracing for more rainfall. Storms, wildfires, changing temperatures, uh, a radical impact on fishing and agriculture. The global impact is undeniable. But what is an El Nino? Like, like what is it? Why does it happen? When does it happen, for that matter? And why do scientists say this year, this El Nino, we're heading into completely uncharted waters. So everything on Earth is uh, cyclical, right? Like we have days, seasons, tides come in, go back out. But there's also this years-long pattern of warm and cold that affects the Pacific Ocean, and then, by extension, the entire world. The warm part of that cycle is called El Nino, and it comes every two to seven years. You never quite know exactly when it's going to come. The last one was in 2016, and it was the hottest year on record. This one is also supposed to be supersized and also intense. And so it has more of a, of a, of a play in terms of what the weather will, will, uh, will be. So normally, we see Pacific winds near the equator blowing east to west. That affects the water because the warmer stuff at the surface where the sun is shining gets pushed along. But that creates a kind of churn in the ocean because what takes the place of the warmer water? Cold water from down below. It flows up. But during an El Nino period, those winds blowing east to west can actually die down. So all that warm surface water stays on the surface, cooking in the sun. You also don't get that cold water churn coming up. And that warmer surface water affects everything around it. Warm water makes for warmer air. Hot, moist air rises, causing more rain, storms, flooding. It becomes kind of a mess. So we know we will feel the impact of El Nino later this year, certainly, likely with a milder winter. You know, during the last El Nino, our winter was between one and five degrees warmer than normal across the country. It has a profound effect on Canadian winters. Essentially, our winters are, 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 are warmer, milder. Uh, they're less, they're, they're more benign than it would be if you, if you had a, a neutral situation or a, a La Nina. As for how El Nino affects more extreme weather, that is less clear. So what is this going to have an effect on Canada uh, this year? We don't know. You just know those, those very warm temperatures are going to be marginally warmer because of El Nino. And you know that storm will be a little stormier, maybe, because of the fuel that's driven by the warmer oceans and the warmer air. But here's the real kicker. El Nino isn't the only thing warming our planet, right? So you take that same, that's not going away, take that same gl climate or global warming or, 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 or climate change, and you add to it an overactive and powerful El Nino, well, no wonder people are saying that this year, but most likely next year, because there's always seems to be a lag, will be the warmest temperature that planet Earth has ever seen. And on that note, we just broke world temperature records two days in a row. The Climate Change Institute in the U.S. says July 3rd and 4th were, on a global average, the hottest days on record, dating back to 1979, when satellite record-keeping began. July 4th registered at almost 17.2 degrees Celsius, which, you know, like here in Canada, that, that doesn't sound very hot, right? But remember, this is a global average, and that's high. Well, the average temperature of planet Earth, stick a thermometer in it, and it's about 15. So we know this one's like two degrees. And you know, in my business, that's a sea change. Now, is that straight up just 
global warming or is it a show of strength from El Nino? Well, it could be both. But by the end of what is expected to be a hot summer, we might have a clearer idea.